Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf and welcome to the unveiling of the latest in our elite brewing teaware range. This is the Gong Fu Vessel. For those of you who don't know, a quick catch up. We started quite a few years ago designing our own tea trays that first came out as the Gong Fu Guru, that was followed up with the Gong Fu Guru Mark II, and then in 2019 we launched our Gong Fu Code range, and that was made up of this large tea tray here, suitable for one, two, six, seven people, that's the Gong Fu Code, and we also came out at the same time with the Gong Fu Code Satellite that we just shortened to the Gong Fu Satellite, and this is for sort of one to four people, so a slight slightly smaller footprint, they fit in with each other, so this satellite fits inside the code, so you can store it all together and you can break them out for large sessions, smaller sessions, or if you wanted giant sessions where you would have the two trays working together. You have no doubt seen these trays featured in many of the videos if you've been following us. But this year, and for the past, I guess, you know, nine to 10 months, we've been working on the design and then the manufacture of this baby here. This is the Gong Fu Vessel. So I'm gonna unveil this for you and I'm gonna show you why we felt that there was another piece of the puzzle missing in our Gong Fu tea tray, teaware, and, uh, and show you the different setups that you can do with the Gong Fu Vessel. So quickly, a recap on the Gong Fu Code series. So all of this marking here is Morse code, uh, written in sort of a script sort of style, um, and they all have meanings to them. And I love the idea of these sort of um, hidden meanings behind uh, the, the tea culture, the, the practice of, of brewing Gong Fu style and the practice of drinking tea and all of the positive attributes that that brings to your life. I like to sort of put that into the teaware, but not in an obvious way. So for anybody looking at this, they would just see a pattern, but these are all Morse codes. And I have to say, everything that you see that has this pattern is a different message. A lot of people didn't realize that when they purchased the Gong Fu code, there's messaging all over the boxes for the code and the satellite, and that is the same here for the Gong Fu vessel. So we've kept the same theme so that they all match together. They are tea trays, which means that you can uh, brew on them and the water or the rinse gets caught in the uh, trays uh, beneath that are coated with ABS plastic so that they are waterproof um, and they are precision draining teaware. They all come with these infusion counters here, so you can inf uh, count the infusions as you go by jumping your tea pet. It started with a frog. We now have an elephant as well and a cat, and no doubt we will continue with these tea pets, with more limited edition tea pets to come to suit this, but I have to say these tea pets, we made sure that we um, made these pegs removable so you can also just use them on any setup you want. Right, so what is the Gong Fu Code Vessel, shortened to Gong Fu Vessel? Um, why did we need to add another piece of teaware to this Gong Fu Code series? Well, let's open it up and then we can uh, take a look in closer detail. So as you can see, the packaging comes complete with more code. If you want to decipher it, you are most welcome to do so code on the top as well. All right, let's open this up. So you'll be greeted with uh, a little um, more code, but uh, a little instructional manual, very, very short, just showing you the difference, uh, different uh, uses that this uh, vessel can provide for your sessions, but I'll be going through them today anyway, so you don't need to look at that right now. And inside here, nicely snugly wrapped up, is our tea tray and a purple clay bowl. Now the purple clay is not going to be the quality purple clay that you would be using for making teaware, uh, like teapots. It's not Yixing Zersha, because that would be way too expensive. But we felt that it would be nice to start to add a little bit more of a, an organic feel. And if you have that clay teaware, it'll certainly match um, and look very good with that teaware. So a little bit of a different aesthetic here, but I think it all matches together. You know, the stainless steel, the wood, the clay, I think it all works together. And of course, this tray fits nicely on top 
of the bowl. And you can see that we've made the coating of this stainless steel. So this is laser cut stainless steel, just like this one, but we've made it a slightly different color just to really sort of uh, match with the clay because we felt that this, uh, this more shiny, a little bit more rose gold color was gonna clash a little bit with the clay. So this, I feel, just is a very, has a very sort of whole holistic design together. Right, so you can see here, we've got the code. Again, up to you to decipher if you would like. I'm not gonna tell you what it means, so you're gonna have to figure that out yourself. And you've got the infusion counter holes here. Um, so you can use the elephant pet, you can use the cat pet, and you can use the, um, the frog pet, so you can choose which pet you would like to use and you can use it as your infusion counter. So you've got five infusion counters here, which means that every time you brew a tea, you can hop the tea pet along and you will know, uh, you'll keep track on which infusion you are on. So it's a Zersha clay bowl. It's this stainless steel laser cut top. The bowl itself stores around a liter of water, so plenty of water here. Um, and this is the point that I want to get across here is, you may have seen things like this before. Um, often they will be sold as pot stands, so smaller that you are putting a pot on to, to just, um, just as a sort of spotlight for the pot, for you to brew on the pot and pour hot water over the pot. But then you may also see rinse bowls, so bowls that are designed for just you know, pouring away your rinse. And we're gonna be talking about when you would be using them differently. But I really felt that there was nothing out there that had the right aesthetic for me and also the right dimensions and size. So we worked very um, carefully on the right size. The idea being having a small footprint, as small as possible, so that you can bring this to your desk, you can brew you know, next to your computer or you know, where, wherever you are working. It's a very small footprint, but it still has exactly the right dimensions to fit the right elements on the tray and also enough capacity for you to not worry about water spilling over and to be used as a rinse bowl. So let me clear this down and I will show you the different setups that are suitable for the Gongfu vessel. First up, you can use it as a brewing station. So we have our Gongfu code, which is for sort of one to six, even more seven, eight people. You've got the Gong Gongfu satellite, which is designed for sort of one to four people. So it's a small setup. You can certainly have this on your desk and brew perfectly happily. But I felt for tighter spaces, when I'm working on my editing or I'm working on my uh, computer or for other work, I really wanted just an even smaller footprint setup at my station and this is perfect. So this is really designed for sort of one, maybe two people and We've designed the, uh, the size of the tray, so the diameter of the tray, to be the perfect size to, as I said before, keep the footprint as small as possible, but still allow you versatility in terms of the tea wear. So you can see here, I've got uh, a Nafu uh, clay pot, uh, a cup, and a Gong Dabe, a pretty big Gong Dabe, and a tea pet. I can also use larger Gong Fu, um, clay pots like this one. Obviously, if you start to use very, very big pots, then it's going to start to restrict your ability to put everything on the station, and you may want to put the cup to the side, for example, and just sort of brew like this into the Gong Dabe and then serve at your desktop. But it really is a great size for brewing. I've also made it the perfect size for Chaozhou style brewing, I'll do a video about that. So you can use the small guy one and three cups. Again, you can see it's perfectly adequate, lots of, you're not cramped. It's the right size for that. It's also great for the Gong Fu Solo. So if you have a Gong Fu Solo, which is a cup and a guy one, perfect. And this is probably my go-to. Whenever I'm sitting doing work, I usually have exactly this setup. So this is mirroring exactly how I have my setup as I've been testing this Gong Fu vessel over the past few months, just trying it out, road testing it, making sure that it's the right size. So you can do the Gong Fu Solo, 
Solo and a T-Pet. You can count your infusions. You can quite happily drink away. And obviously you've got a big capacity for the rinse and any sort of leftover tea to be poured down into the um, bowl below. And if you want more sessions, you can just empty the leaves into the bowl, cover it up with the, the tea tray so it looks all nice and neat. And you can have really neat, very aesthetic, very sort of a perfect footprint and a perfect uh, bijou gong fu style brewing. So I've got some black fruit punch here. I'm just gonna brew one infusion just so you can see it in action. <clears throat> so into the gong dao bay. <clears throat> Haven't had any tea today. And you can take the tea pet if you wanted to offer the tea pet um, some tea, you can put it in the middle, or if you wanted, you could also pour it closer to the edge, but be a, bit, a little bit more careful. There's a ridge on the edge of this tray, so you've got about a five millimeter ridge to stop any um, tea from splashing over the edge. Um, obviously, be you know, be mindful that you don't just fling tea everywhere. And that's another thing that I've found with a lot of the um, uh, tea trays that I had tested that were sort of of a similar size. I felt that the design wasn't right. It wasn't draining properly. There was far too much spillage. I want things to be neat. I tend to have a towel. I say that, but I don't have one with me now. Um, but I tend to have a towel just sort of sitting next to this setup just so that if there is any drops that I catch them. Oh, black fruit punch, straight up mangosteen. I'm not gonna do a tasting, but I just wanted to show how easy it is to put everything onto the Gong Fu vessel and not worry about it. And it's a very, very small footprint. You can check the dimensions uh, by going onto the website. You'll see all the dimensions there. So you can use these sort of 100, 120, up to sort of 130. You start to maybe have a little bit of an issue when you start to get to sort of 150 and above pots, 150 mil pots and above, to try and put everything, including a tea pet, onto the Gongfu vessel. But as I said, you can forget the tea pet if you wanted, and you could put the cup just down on the table, maybe on a saucer, and then you can just have the pot and the... Uh, Gong Dao Bay on the Gong Fu vessel. I needed that, bit of lubrication, oh, delicious tea. So that's the first use of this and probably the use that mo most people will be using the most is this setup, which is a brewing station. As I said, after you finish your brew, I'm not gonna do it because obviously these are prime leaves, but you can take the leaves, pick up the tray and just put the leaves into the tray and then it looks exactly like this again. All neat, all nice, all the leaves are just hiding underneath this, uh, underneath this stainless steel tray and you won't know how much tea you've been drinking until you reach the end of the day and you empty your vessel out. All right, so that's the first setup, the brewing station and I use it almost every day for this purpose. Right, let's move on to the next setup. So of course you can use the Gong Fu vessel as a rinse bowl and leaf collector. It's up to you if you want to leave the, the tray on or you can take it off. Some people like to see the leaves build up and, and the uh, rinse build up. Um, I tend to prefer it this way and just sort of lift it up to put the leaves in. That way I think it looks a lot neater, but that's entirely up to you. I've got a dry um, setup here, but you don't have to do it in such a formal way. Um, sometimes I am, well, a lot of times actually when I'm doing sourcing and I'm tasting 20, 30, 40, 50 teas in a row, I have lots of small guy ones and I'm just going through lots of them and I need a bowl on hand to just pour the rinse away. I'm not gonna start setting all of those going ones up on a tray. I'm gonna have it on a work surface, either on a towel or on a wipeable work surface, and I'm pouring away the rinse. That may not be something that you do that often, unless you are a tea uh, buyer and you're sampling lots of teas, but I certainly use it for that purpose. But also if you wanted to do a dry setup, and we're gonna be talking more about dry setups um, in future videos, but something a little bit more formal, a little bit more controlled, where everything slows down because you've got to be careful not to drop water everywhere. That's a nice discipline to get involved in. And the 
the rinse bowl or the uh, gong fu vessel is going to be a very, very important part of that because you have to pour your rinse somewhere. So you need a rinse bowl and the gong fu vessel is perfect for that. So just as an example, you would need to be very careful when you heat your teaware up that you don't drip. And then pour the water away. You can then use your gong fu stems to fill up your pot very carefully. And so the whole art of dry brewing, and as I said, we'll do more videos about this, is all about, you know, making sure that every movement is well controlled and it certainly is a great way to bring you into the present. So you get the idea, you can do the whole brew and serve yourself here. And it's, there's something really lovely about the flatness of a dry session and the necessity of a tea bowl here, a rinse bowl and a leaf collector, right? So you certainly can use it simply as a leaf collector. I'm gonna bring the vessel front and center here, make sure that you can all see it. Um, you can also sort of do a hybrid version where you have a dry setup like this, but you do put the pot on to the vessel and then it becomes a pot stand. So this is essentially a pot stand and you can see pot stands are available, but they tend to be a much smaller capacity because they're designed just for this purpose, just for a pot stand. And I find, I, I love the versatility of a, of, a, of a teaware which suits multiple purposes and achieves multiple aims. So um, a great pot stand you can use um, for your dry sessions. Uh, the Again, the capacity has been designed so that even sort of large kyusus can fit there. You can see this Jen Shui Hui pot, which has got quite a large base, fits very easily on there. So it's gonna be very hard for you to find a pot that doesn't fit on the Gongfu vessel. I would say that it would be unlikely that it would be a Gongfu size pot or a Japanese kyusu that would normally be used by most of you out there. So as a pot stand, it is excellent. So you can pour water directly over the kyusu or the pot and you can see it drains really nicely so you can you know, warm up your teaware, keep the heat during brew. So it's lovely, a pot stand is lovely as a sort of spotlight, just a spotlight on exactly what you are brewing. And if you are using it as a pot stand, then there is nothing stopping you pairing the Gong Fu vessel with one of the other Gong Fu trays in the series, either pairing it for like a fiesta session with the Gong Fu satellite, or pairing it with the Gong Fu code for like a mega session, or pairing all of them together so all three on the tabletop for like a mammoth gong fu party and if I was going to do that then I would be using the gong fu vessel as my spotlight for the tea that we are brewing right now I would probably uh, save the gong fu satellite as the serving station so you know the gong dao bays and the cups um, and I would probably have other tea ware that is ready to go, that, you know, teas that I wanted to try uh, that was gonna be next in line, or maybe you sort of pause halfway through a session with one, you put it to the side, you put another one on the vessel. Basically, you have limitless options on how you want to rearrange, rearrange um, all of this setup. And I think that it all works very well together uh, aesthetically as well. So. The Gong Fu vessel can be used as a pot stand for dry sessions, but it can also be used as a pot stand for mega and mammoth sessions like this paired with other trays. Of course, you could just put it to the side and use it as a rinse bowl. It's completely up to you. It's very, very, very versatile. And as we said earlier, you can be using it as your solo up to three people brewing station for the smallest footprint to get those Gong Fu brews. There is a fourth function for the Gong Fu vessel that we are calling Arc Brewing, but that's the subject of another video. Let me know your thoughts on the Gong Fu vessel. I think that this is the final piece to the puzzle for me. I've got now the complete setup from very, very small to ridiculously large Gong Fu parties. I think everything is now 
covered and I can sort of take my design hat off for the Gong Fu Code series. But let me know your thoughts. Am I missing something? Is there something that you are looking for? Let me know your thoughts on the Gong Fu Vessel and make sure that you pick one up if you're interested. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.